Many of the film fans amongst you may be aware that 2013's The Conjuring and the following year's release Annabelle are at least somewhat based on a true story. The origins of Annabelle are developed in further films, and she is owned by various people throughout the series. While it's true that some of this is fiction, two of the central characters of the original The Conjuring film, Edward and Lorraine Warren, were indeed real people and real paranormal investigators. Edward was a self-taught demonologist, author, and college lecturer. Lorraine was a clairvoyant and medium. They are not the only characters from the film series that exist in real life. Annabelle herself is not a work of fiction. Although details of this story have been created for the movie, the real Annabelle has been in the possession of the Warrens since 1970. Even after Edward and Lorraine Warren passed, Annabelle remained in the Warrens' occult museum in Monroe, Connecticut. As the saying goes, life is stranger than fiction. So with that in mind, Join us as we investigate the story of the world's most infamous haunted doll. Much of the story where Annabelle came from is shaped by the Warrens, so it is important to be skeptical. Joseph Laycock, an assistant professor at Texas State University, called the Annabelle legend an interesting case study in the relationship between pop culture and paranormal folklore. In this case, the paranormal folklore that Laycock speaks about is mostly controlled by the Warrens' retelling of it. In 1952, the Warrens founded the New England Society for Psychic Research and with it opened the Warrens Occult Museum. The items gained by the Warrens during their investigations were put on display in the museum. As the story goes, in 1970, a 28-year-old student nurse named Donna was given the doll that would come to be known as Annabelle. Annabelle was, at this time, a seemingly innocent Raggedy Ann doll given to Donna by her mother as a gift. The point in the story is essentially the end of the prequel film Annabelle. But don't worry, we will get to that. Donna and her roommate were convinced that the doll was moving on its own, often finding it in places that they did not put it. And not just small movements, the doll was oftentimes found in completely different rooms. There were also unexplained notes found around their apartment asking for help and even blood on the doll. At this point, Donna and her roommate decided to contact a medium. The medium confirmed that the doll was inhabited by the spirit of a young girl called Annabelle Higgins. Annabelle was believed to have died on the grounds that would later be used for Donna's apartment. Reports vary at this point, but one of the most commonly believed theories is that the medium told Donna that Annabelle's spirit felt love being in the doll and asked to stay. Donna granted this request. However, after a series of events involving unexplained occurrences, Donna and her friends became convinced that something needed to be done. They contacted members of their church with the intention of carrying out an exorcism or other such ritual. It is at this point that the Warrens are introduced to the story of Annabelle as they were brought in by a priest within the church. It is interesting to note one of the common mistakes in this story. The Warrens believe that inanimate objects such as dolls could not be possessed by spirits, only manipulated by evil demons. Despite the Warrens distancing themselves from the notion that the doll's activity had anything to do with a girl called Annabelle, the name stuck. The New England Society for Psychic Research, or NESPER, that was founded by the Warrens is actually still alive and functional to this day. NESPER is currently run by the Warrens' son-in-law, Tony Spira. What most horror fans do not realize is the association that NESPER has had with some of the most famous ghost stories in America since its foundation almost 80 years ago. Many of the cases investigated by Nesper have inspired other successful horror films, including the Amityville Horror. While many details in films may be exaggerated or entirely inaccurate, one thing that was correct is that the Warrens did run a supernatural detective agency. As we mentioned, Ed was a self-taught ghost hunter and Lorraine was a medium. They did not charge for their services instead making money through book sales and consulting on many Hollywood movies. However, 
Nesper was clearly a respected organization in the area, used by the church. The Nesper website even has case files on Annabelle and many of their other investigations. Well, since the doll came into the possession of the Warrens, it has been on display at the Warrens Occult Museum in Monroe, Connecticut. The journey to get Annabelle from Donna's home to the Warrens Museum was not without some strange happenings. On the car ride back, the Warrens' vehicle almost came off the road on several occasions. Edward Warren insisted on dousing the doll in holy water. Annabelle has been kept among artifacts and haunted objects that have been recovered by Nesper over the years. The museum had been open to the public, where those not afraid could come face to face with the doll. That is, until recently, when, in August 2020, news of a supposed escape had the internet in panic. Rumors and reports suggested that Annabelle was on the loose. However, this turned out to be nothing more than a hoax. Annabelle did not escape. Annabelle's here. Well, that is the official story. Due to a zoning violation, the Warren's Occult Museum closed in 2019, and the doll was believed to be back in the private ownership of Tony Spera. With the Warrens no longer alive, the possibility of the museum reopening is uncertain, and so is the future of Annabelle. Will the doll ever be back on display? Will she remain in private ownership? Did she actually escape? Time will have to tell on the next chapter of Annabelle's story. We now turn our attention to some of the strange stories and testimonies from others that have come into contact with Annabelle. Many other occurrences have taken place involving Annabelle that support the theory of some form of supernatural possession. Father Jason Bradford was a priest employed by the Warrens to perform an exorcism on Annabelle after they noticed similar peculiar behavior that was shown when the doll was owned by Donna. After Bradford touched the doll for the first time and performed the ritual, he left the property. Whilst driving onto a junction, his brakes cut out. His car suffered serious damage, and he was lucky to survive. One of the stories not as heavily focused on in the film version is that of Lou. For this, we return to the story of Donna. As this is the time we are introduced to the Warrens, it is peculiar that this has been omitted from the films. The Warrens were, after all, the gatekeepers to the Annabelle mythology. As the story goes, Lou was a friend of Donna and her roommate, and he would often be found at their apartment. This was a regular occurrence when Annabelle was there, so Lou would often be around the doll. Lou was the first person to be suspicious of Annabelle, even telling Donna to throw it away. They then discovered unexplainable pieces of paper that contained messages, including the words, help Lou. Even after these messages appeared, and despite Lou's protests, this went unreported. Donna's decision to keep Annabelle after hearing how much the spirit enjoyed her life did not sit well with Lou, who continued to doubt the doll and the spirit. It is suggested that Annabelle then viewed Lou as a threat, and the spirit attempted to respond. The first of these strange occurrences with Lou saw him wake up in the middle of the night, feeling paralyzed. At this point, he claims to have seen Annabelle climbing up his chest and attempting to strangle him. He survived the night. The next day, they were set to go on a trip, when Lou heard a loud struggle in Donna's room. Upon entering, he found the room empty except for Annabelle, and no evidence of anyone being there recently. Although, Annabelle was lying on the floor, which was unusual. When Lou approached Annabelle to pick her up, he experienced tremendous pain and hunched over. Lou was now bleeding through his shirt. Upon removing his shirt, Lou had scratch wounds on his chest, which instantly healed. It is at this point that they brought in the church and then the warrants, taking us back to the very beginning. So was Lou battling with the spirit? Was the story exaggerated by the Warrens and others involved? We will let you decide. Were you lucky enough to take a tour of the Warrens Occult Museum and see Annabelle in person before it closed? Are you aware of any other haunted dolls? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you soon.